Hey, I'm Melissa. I'm Jam. And I'm a chemist. And I'm not. And welcome to Chemistry for Your Life. The podcast helps you understand the chemistry of your everyday life. Okay, so this episode Mm -hmm. is actually inspired by a a few things. Okay. One, our previous skincare routine episodes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Two, content from Dr. Shaw. He's the dermatologist that really got me excited about skincare in the first place. Nice, nice. And then my own skincare routine and also your wife. Okay, nice. So this episode is all about how benzoyl peroxide works its magic. Okay, I've definitely heard of that stuff. I have used it. I have had it. I've had tubes yeah. of it. I've had, yeah. That's probably the only like acne related sort of ingredient mm-hmm. that I actually can know and remember in my head. Yes. So it's a really good acne fighting ingredient. Actually, there's really high evidence that it does fight acne, scientifically speaking. Uh huh. There's some other stuff we talked about, like hyaluronic acid. That doesn't fight acne. It also doesn't cause acne. It's basically just a moisturizer. Right, right. But this actually fights acne. Okay. Okay. So, luckily, I don't struggle with acne a ton at this point in my life. Uh I more have, like, blackheads, but I don't have a ton of, like, those crazy big whiteheads. Yeah. Um, But every once in a while, I'll get one. Yeah. Usually related to eating sugar, which actually science does say that eating sugar can be related to breakouts. Interesting. So when that happens, I learned a trick from your wife that I have a little tube of benzoyl peroxide gel and I'll put it on wherever the little acne whitehead is starting. I feel it starting. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And then I wake up the next day and it's gone. Wow. And she told me that. And I'm not sure I really believed her, but also you can get these tubes for like three to five dollars of like benzoyl peroxide gel. Yeah. yeah. So not very expensive. Definitely. And they last a long time. You can also get benzoyl peroxide wash, Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. designed to put it on and then rinse off. Yeah. So it was first suggested to me by your wife, Emily. Uh Uh-huh. It was further suggested by this dermatologist on TikTok. Okay. And I really wish I would have known about this as a teenager. (laughs) (laughs) So to any teens out there listening about how this works, please don't suffer like I did (laughs) because I suffered. I definitely had acne as a teenager, but I don't as much anymore. Nice. Okay. So before we talk about the chemistry of benzoyl peroxide, let's just talk about what acne is. Okay. There are different types of acne that form, uh-huh. but the one we're talking about mostly is uh, whiteheads. Right. That's kind of the main thing that benzoyl peroxide works on as far as I'm aware. Mm-hmm. And I guess it could work on other stuff, but we'll talk about it. Essentially, acne exists because you have follicles in your skin, hair follicles, and those excrete oil. Uh-huh. And that oil is used to keep your skin from drying out and from taking in too much moisture. Okay. It basically protects us from losing or gaining too much water. Okay, got it. That makes sense. Totally makes sense. And occasionally those follicles can get blocked Mm -hmm. if there's too much oil produced. And the too much oil produced can be caused by hormones or eating too much sugar or a few other things. Okay. And then if they get blocked, there's bacteria that always lives in your skin Mm -hmm. called P. acnes. Okay. And it starts to thrive off of the dead skin cells and the oil that are building up. Okay. And then your body recognizes that something's wrong. Uh Uh-huh. And it sends blood to the area to drop off white blood cells. Okay. So that they can rescue you from this extra bacteria. Right, right. And the blood rushing to that area is why it gets red and inflamed. Okay. And then the white blood cells that come and try to save you as they die, they're just in the blocked pore. Mm. So then that's where you get the white head filled with dead white blood cells, dead skin cells, and oil. Ah, I see. Yeah. That's what's all in that pus there. Interesting. Yeah. Huh. So that's what a white head is, basically. Uh And like I said, it can be caused by hormones, eating too much sugar, but that's the main idea. Okay. Now, how benzoyl peroxide works is pretty exciting in chemistry. 
Nice. So one thing that we've talked about a lot lately with coffee is solubility. Uh Uh-huh. And different things have different solubility in different substances. Right. A really simple one you can think of is oil and water. Mm -hmm. Water is not good at interacting with oil. If you put oil in your pasta water, for example, the oil kind of stays in pockets. Right. So if you try to wash your face without something that can, you know, get at the oil, it's not really going to do anything, right? That oil layer on our skin is a barrier. Yeah. So something that's cool about benzoyl peroxide is it has nonpolar groups on either side. It's called peroxide Mm because there's two oxygens. That's a functional group, two oxygens linked together. Uh But on either side of those functional groups, there are two benzene rings. We've talked about benzene before. Uh But the big thing is those are two pretty big nonpolar groups. Okay. So if it's nonpolar, that means the electrons are pretty evenly shared all the way through. Right. So there's not any big areas of high electron density or low electron density. Right, right. So there's not big positives and big negatives. Right. So the main intermolecular force that you're going to see from that is just dispersion forces. Okay. So it's going to interact well with other things that don't have poles, that doesn't have a positive and a negative portion. And oil happens to also not have poles. Right, right. And if you want more info on that, you can go way, way, way back (laughs) to the episode we talked about, like the first episode or second episode I think we ever did, maybe, Uh on why how geckos walk on walls. Yeah, it was pretty early, but yeah. So benzoyl peroxide works well because it is soluble in the oils and fats that are hanging out in your acne. Got it. In that little white head. Yeah. yeah. So if you zoom in and imagine the benzoyl peroxide is absorbed through the skin because there's still a light layer of skin over the white head. Uh Uh-huh. And then it can just interact chemically with all those oils and it will evenly, or maybe not evenly, but easily Uh get in through all these fats, whereas other things maybe won't be able to penetrate the fats and oils as well if they have more polarity to them. Right, right. So that's the one thing. It's soluble in oil and fat. Okay. But then it has this functional group in the middle. The peroxide group is two oxygens together. So you've probably heard of that as hydrogen peroxide. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's a hydrogen, oxygen, oxygen, hydrogen. Okay. H2O2. Okay. This is similar. It has the two oxygens together. So peroxides tend to form radicals. Okay. And we've talked about radicals before. They are a single electron. Do you remember what you said about them? <laughs> um, we talked about it in the antioxidant episode. I remember talking about them, but I don't remember what I said about them. You said their name matches their behavior. Oh, okay. Because they get in and mess stuff up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they're that radical. Like okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so radicals act radically. They get in there and they mess stuff up. Uh huh. I think you said that. Maybe I said that, but I remember you talking about how there it was pleasing that their name matched. Yes. In some way, or that another. definitely stuck with me. So maybe no matter who said it, I still I did remember that that is what they are like. Okay, great. <laughs> so. <laughs> so in this case, they may produce some radicals just naturally by interacting with light, but also your body metabolizes them and produces uh, radicals that way as well. Okay. So that's oxygen radicals Uh that it produces from the peroxide group. And oxygen radicals cause what's known as oxidative stress to bacteria, which the best way I can think about it is it puts too many radicals in the bacteria that it can't handle and kind of blows it up. The cell can't manage. Interesting. Okay. So the oxidative stress kills cells. So it's sort of kind of like we're using radicals in this case in a good way? Yes. Normally we would not want to just add a lot of radicals to our system. Nope. But because we're doing it in a very specific place for a specific reason, it's helpful? Exactly. Okay. Okay. So in this case, you harness the power of radicals doing bad things Mm -hmm. to do something good for you. Okay. And it's induce oxidative stress in bacteria specifically. Mm -hmm. 
the bad thing about radicals is they can induce oxidative stress in other areas too. Okay. So you don't want them all over your cells or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but in a bacteria, you do want oxidative stress so that the bacteria dies. Okay, interesting. So I think of benzoyl peroxide as being able to penetrate the lines of the enemy, maybe uh -huh. like an undercover spy. Uh -huh. It can get in amongst the oil. It can get in amongst the gunk. Yeah. Release radicals that do damage in a controlled way. Yeah. You know, you're only putting it on that one spot or only on your, you're using your face, face wash, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It kills the enemy and your white head goes away. Okay. That is very interesting. That's how I think of its function. It yeah. gets in there and then it releases the radicals. Nice. Dang, that's cool. And here's what's nice about it using the radical mechanism is because it causes oxidative stress instead of using some other way to be antibacterial, uh -huh. it actually, the bacteria is not going to be able to develop an immunity to that. I see. So yeah. a lot of times bacteria figures out how antibiotics are working and then they figure out how to mutate to thwart that. Right, right. I mean, they're not figuring it out. They're not sentient, but right. you they're, know. it's Yeah, they're adapting. Yeah, they're adapting. Yeah. But you can't really adapt to avoid oxidative stress. You have to have the right balance of stable oxygen and oxygen radicals. And if they have too many oxygen radicals, they can't function. Right. Period. Right. right. So there's no adapting. So we don't build up Interesting. any kind of immunity. So you can yeah. use benzoyl peroxide forever and it'll keep working. Wow, that is great. I didn't even think about that. I mean, I've heard a lot about that, you know, bacteria adapting from my wife who work, you know, she has to prescribe antibiotics all the time, talk right. to people about their infections and help them figure that stuff out or whatever. So I know that side did not even think about how what we're applying to our skin is also trying to, you know, combat bacteria. Yeah. I just, you know, have, have those really in different categories in my mind. Yeah. But it's so cool that it's doing it not in a like medicinal antibiotic way yeah that can't be adapted to or whatever that mm -hmm. wow i didn't even think about that i know i think it's really cool yeah so and that's kind of a brief overview i think if i was a biologist i'd be able to go a lot more in detail into why oxidative stress occurs the way it does and if you're a biologist listening and you want to come on and explain it to us I'd love that. Feel free to do that. Yes. But I think that this way of thinking of it, like it's just going to get in there and wreak havoc is a really good way of thinking about what radicals are going to do. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I want you to try to summarize the chemistry of that. Okay. There's the two parts. And then I'll give you one fun fact and one thing to look forward to. Okay. Really. Okay. You don't have as much to look forward to as the listeners, but one fun fact and one thing for our listeners to look forward to. Okay. 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 So I liked your analogy a Thank lot. Thank you. It helped me understand it very well. I think one thing I'll add in is basically, so we've got this pimple, this mm -hmm. whitehead. Yes. It's full of bacteria and dead white blood cells and, and dead skin cells, which the bacteria is loving. Yes. Driving there. And it's sort of basically like the enemy army. Yes. Like, like you said. Mm -hmm. So what I was kind of thinking about is obviously each, you know, cell of bacteria and stuff mm -hmm. made up of atoms and molecules and stuff like we are. We yeah. talk about all every episode. Um, that's your world. Molecules <laughs> and atoms. Yeah. That is the tiny world that I pretend to shrink myself down and go into a lot. <laughs> and, and so together they make up like a tank. Imagine oh, a tank, yeah. you know, full of soldiers or whatever. Yes. Benzoyl peroxide and bacteria and fats and oils and stuff like that is nonpolar. Yes. So even distribution of electrons, mm -hmm. not like heavily um, concentrated on one end of the molecule or another. Right. Even distribution. So we need something that's also even distribution of electrons, nonpolar, to be able to interact with it. Right. So benzoyl peroxide... We apply it to our little whitehead. Uh huh. It dissolves, you know, in, in goes into our skin, goes uh -huh. into the whitehead. Yes. Each of those, those collection of atoms, mm -hmm. those molecules are also a tank. Mm. And they are, because they're nonpolar as well, mm -hmm. and they just go right in. Look, 
looks totally fine. They're a tank too. Oh, they look like the enemy tanks. Yeah, at least in the way that like matters in this scenario. <laughs> right. Know? They're non-polar enough to be able to go in undercover yes, type of thing. Exactly. Okay. And so, but because they have that extra, so that's already the most important step or the first step is to just even get in there, to right? To penetrate, yeah. yeah. Otherwise, what can we even do if we can't get in there? Yes, exactly. So they get in there. Great thing to look a little like the enemy mm -hmm. to just integrate into the enemy's forces. Yes. But the difference is that they have this little extra soldier in there, this kind of a secret little weapon, <laughs> which is that extra electron, mm -hmm. the radical, the oxygen with one electron, right? Yes. And so then what happens once they fully integrated, obviously this probably happens all at once or sort of, you know, who knows the actual steps of this, but right. for the sake of the analogy, once they've integrated, that radical gets out of the tank, goes and gets in the bacteria's tank. And just because of that, this is the harder part, just messes it all up. Just messes, it just destroys the inside. Yeah. Just goes in, say, like, just presses self-destruct or Throw, something like yeah, that. Yeah, or throws a hand grenade. <laughs> yeah, throws a hand grenade, whatever. This radical is radical, and <laughs> it's not taking any prisoners. It's just there to just completely disable the enemy. Yes. And it does that very well. Yes, that's a really good analogy. And so that once that happens, overnight... We're sleeping. This war is raging, <laughs> absolutely raging mm -hmm. carnage happening in this little white um, hill of yes. our, <laughs> on our, uh, this little big Where horn. Where you dabbed <laughs> it on as you went to sleep. Yeah. The battle of little big horn is happening here. <laughs> and then we wake up, the battle's over mm -hmm. and all of the enemy tanks, are ideally, hopefully, have just been disabled completely. Disabled. And all the bacteria has fallen apart, denatured, whatever you want to say. I guess not denatured, but is it's died through been, oxidative stress. Been killed. Yep. And then we have a clear face, hopefully. Mm -hmm. And normal levels of acne and oil are restored. Nice. The other thing I forgot to, I wanted to say two things. Okay. One, to clarify your analogy, the way the radicals is formed is the bond between the two oxygens typically. Uh huh will break okay. and each of the oxygen then gets one electron to go with it. Got it. So they're probably like two radicals coming out of yes. each tank. But it did say specifically that your body metabolizes it uh -huh. first. So I think some, some radicals are generated just by being exposed to light. That happens with all peroxides is they will, that bond will break and two uh -huh. radicals will form. And some of it is generated through your body metabolizing it first. Okay. It wasn't super clear on the percentages. I read one paper that said like 98%, another paper that said 40% would be uh -huh. metabolized. So I'm assuming you're getting radicals from both mechanisms. But the main idea is the bond between the oxygen bonds will break. Uh -huh. There's a bond between two oxygen atoms. It will break and it splits evenly. So each atom gets one electron. Got it. Got it. Interesting. So that's how that works. The other thing is the way I think of benzoyl peroxide is like a little gel that you apply on your face uh -huh. and then you just leave it. Uh -huh. But there are washes and part of what makes the washes for benzoyl peroxide effective is not only can they get into that bacteria, but they can wash away oil because nice. they're in there breaking it up. Nice. Okay. So that's also part of it too. Is they can some, kind of be preventative a little bit too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If there's any excess oil somewhere. Yes. Got it. Okay. Okay, so that was really good. I liked that analogy a lot. <laughs> it was very dramatic. I could yeah. picture it in my mind. Yeah. <laughs> so that was really good. I really liked that. It Oh, and it also can break up the oil that's blocked in there as a wash too, you know. Nice. nice. Yeah, it does lots of good things. Yeah, yeah. So here's one fun fact. Okay. There is research in the dermatology sphere that shows that benzoyl peroxide can act what's known as synergistically with other acne products. Okay. So it's not like if you use benzoyl peroxide and product B, you get the just benzoyl peroxide's effects and product B effects. Actually, uh -huh. product B can enhance the effectiveness of benzoyl peroxide. Interesting. I know. And I couldn't find a lot of research on why, but yeah. I thought that was so cool and it made me think how much dermatologists have to understand about how products work together because some products can kind of cancel each other out. Right. And right. some products can like boost each other up. Yeah. 
Yeah. The way that the doctor, it wasn't actually Dr. Shaw, but his partner uh. um, said is like A plus B doesn't equal C. So benzoyl peroxide plus something else doesn't equal just those two together. It equals like five times C. Right. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. So I thought that was really cool. Yeah. So that's a fun fact about benzoyl peroxide and how smart dermatologists are. Uh-huh. The second fun thing for our listeners to look forward to uh-huh. is this episode is kind of based highly in the episode about antioxidants. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Where we talked all about how radicals form and how antioxidants work. Uh-huh. And so we're actually going to play that in our rebroadcast next week. Uh-huh. But also this episode is so much entrenched in bleach because benzoyl peroxide can easily bleach your sheets. Nice. Like if I put this on my face, I have a bleach pillow that I use specifically because I know it can tend to bleach things. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're interested in that, the next rebroadcast after that will be how bleach works. Got it. Yeah. So those are two fun episodes you guys can look forward to. Yeah. I like both of those a lot. I kind of feel like I remember the antioxidants one, a little bit better than the bleach one. Mm-hmm. So I'm a bit interested to to look back at those as well. And it just gives a lot more information about radicals and how they form, but then also how our bodies fight them. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that will be a good one to pair with this. Nice. So good job, Jam. I'm really impressed at how you came up with an analogy on that. This was a fun episode. Well, I had a great start. So all I had to do is add in some drama. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, you added in some good, some good uh, dramatic points there. <laughs> but is there anything about your week that you also had fun that you want to share with us? Okay, so speaking of adding in drama and like intensity <laughs> and all that kind of stuff uh, to the analogy, my wife and I have been watching a show that is not new that most people will think, how are you just now... <laughs> watching this show we we were looking for a show to watch together and we decided to try out watch watching the show lost (laughs) from well like 2003 2004 yeah on abc and i never watched it we didn't have any of those channels like in the ability to watch that whenever that show came out when i was a kid so i had no way to watch it i had heard other people talking about it back then obviously it was a huge deal yeah but i never watched it i only heard people's opinions and forgot almost any spoilers they might have accidentally yeah. given, you know? And I don't have a clue what happens on that show. Yeah. So we we started watching it. We we're just like, let's just see. And of course, just like everybody else back in, you know, 15, 18 years ago, <laughs> we got sucked in because it's dramatic and yeah. there's lots of mysteries and stuff. But it's been fun. And I, I think the thing I like about it is, you know, there's lots of new TV shows all the time. Yeah. It's kind of cool to go watch an older one. It's not old, obviously, but older. Yeah. And get sucked into it. Yeah, that is fun. And I had I had read an article that didn't have any spoilers in it, but just talked about how this person made a point that they felt like Lost set up a lot of important stuff for TV in the later years. Oh, interesting. And helped sort of bring more of those kind of higher budget niche um complex story yeah. type shows to the to a broader audience. That people would still be interested even though it was more complex. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. they even made a case that like if it had premiered like ten years later on Netflix, that it might have actually been more successful in some ways. Yeah. And not have had to fight so hard to, to even exist and stuff. So anyway, all I have to say, uh super behind. <laughs> just now watching Lost. Um and but it's been really fun. So that does sound really fun. Yeah. Well, similarly, I've been listening to a very old thing. Uh huh. It's a little book called Little Women. Nice. And there is a podcast called Phoebe Reads a Mystery. Uh huh. And it's Phoebe Judge who has a great, calm, soothing voice. And she literally just reads a chapter of a book every day. Oh, nice. But it's so hard to like wait for the next episode to come out because I'm all caught up. So I'm every day I'm waiting to hear what happens next in the book. Uh huh. And it's caused me to slow down, but also to be really invested in a way that I don't know that I've been invested in a book or an audiobook in a really long time. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And so that's been really fun and it's really encouraging and it sends a lot of really good messages. So I really, it's, you know, a book about reflecting on being content and yeah. trying to, you know, be quote unquote good and loving yeah, and kind and how really that usually works out better for you in the end. Uh-huh. 
and it's been really good. I really liked it. I know it's kind of outdated and there are th- some things about it that are yeah. problematic, but it's still been a nice journey with Phoebe Judge. So go check that out. Totally. Yeah, I have not read that, but I've always heard good things about people who've read it. And I have seen the more recent film adaptation and yeah. loved it. So I'm definitely open to reading the book for sure. Yeah. I feel like stories like that, obviously, there's things that are outdated, but it's cool that there can be a compelling story yeah. from a previous time. Yes. That's probably pretty accurate to the time, you know? And it's also, I think, something that I think Jane Austen does too. And so did, when I read Anna Karenina, it had this thing that I was amazed that even that long ago, there are things about human nature that are the same. Yes. Right. Right. And I feel like Little Women is good at addressing some of those things that are the same, same tendencies that I have. There's a chapter on the beginning of marriage that I was uh-huh. like, whoo, if this isn't just the most accurate. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that's also really encouraging is some things about humans and discontentedness and needing to grow past our demons, you know, is yeah. really, really encouraging. Dude, that's awesome. So Very that's cool. been fun. Yeah, it's definitely cooler and more inspiring than Lost. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's made it hard to go listen to the murder podcast I listen to after. Yeah. I've just been listening to something so uplifting and inspiring, and now I'm like, what is this? What yeah. am I doing? <laughs> well, then there's another reason that I'm very <laughs> glad that you're listening to that. So <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, Jam, for coming and learning about benzoyl peroxide. I was really excited to share about this because I was wondering how the magic of the overnight disappearing yeah. zit occurs. Yes, definitely. And thank you for teaching me. I haven't really wondered how benzoyl peroxide has worked. I've just used it. Yeah. And so this is a much cooler explanation than I thought it was going to be. So anyway, thank you for teaching us. And if you have questions or ideas out there, you listener who wonder about something in your life that could be chemistry... Please reach out to us on Gmail, Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook at Chem for Your Life. That's Chem, F O R, Your Life, to share your thoughts and ideas with us. If you'd like to help us keep our show going and contribute to cover the cost of making it, go to ko fi.com slash chem for your life or click the link in our show notes to donate the cost of a cup of coffee. If you're not able to donate, you can still help us by subscribing on your favorite podcast app or rating and writing a review on Apple Podcasts. That also helps us to share chemistry with even more people. This episode of Chemistry for Your Life was created by Melissa Collini and Jam Robinson. References for this episode could be found in our show notes or on our website. Jam Robinson is our producer, and we'd like to give a special thanks to A. Collini and S. Navarro, who reviewed this episode. Mm-hmm.